Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to Coder SA. Thank you. And uh, from wherever you are in our beautiful state of South Australia, uh, I'm Jermaine. I'm the Community Programs Manager here at Cota SA. And joining me uh, today is John Moran, our Country Ageing Well Coordinator. Welcome, John. Thank you, Jermaine, and welcome everyone who's uh, tuning in. Thank you. So for those of you that are familiar with Zoom. Uh, this is a webinar format where you're not visible to the other people that are uh, joining us today. And so you're not on anyone else's screen and your microphones are also muted. So you can uh, sit back, relax and enjoy your lunch um, while you're listening to the conversation. If you wish to ask a question, you can do that by typing it into the chat box. So there's a little icon at the bottom of your screen which says chat. Uh, if you click on that, you can type in your question on the chat box when that pops up. Um, we will see that. Uh, you'll notice that it's set to uh, host and panellists. So that means that we will see your question, but other people joining the webinar won't see your question. So please feel free to ask those questions. Um, firstly, Kota SA acknowledges the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains as the traditional custodians of the land our head Waters occupy and where we are hosting this webinar today. We also acknowledge all Aboriginal nations throughout South Australia. We honour Aboriginal people's continuing connection to country and recognise that their sovereignty was never ceded. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people. Just a bit of background about COTA SA. COTA stands for Council on the Ageing. COTA SA, we're a not-for-profit organisation, an older people's movement and the peak body that represents older people in South Australia uh, and their rights and interests and futures of more than 630,000 people in South Australia aged 50 and over. We work with governments and other decision makers to overcome disadvantage and inequality and showcase the diversity of ageing across South Australia. And we challenge ageism and create new possibilities uh, for and with older South Australians. Our information, our programs and services all aim to help South Australians age well. Um, this, I would encourage you, we're all online today, so I'd encourage you to visit our website um, to read more about the things we do, including the Rainbow Hub, which is for LGBTI elders. Uh, the Flurio Neighbourhood Network is a new initiative for those that are living in the Victor Harbour and Goolwa regions. Uh, Coach of Visitors that supports uh, uh, volunteers to visit with older people that are experiencing loneliness. Uh, the plug-in that connects uh, creators of product services and policies with older people, with a, with a, with a, a community of influencers to inform and shape design and development of, of uh, product services and policies. Uh, our Strength for Life program is really popular across the state and that builds fitness, strength and balance in over 100 facilities across the state, gyms and fitness centres and, and such. And we've also got advisory groups in the York Peninsula and in the Flurio Peninsula as well, so you can get involved there as well if you're living in those regions. And of course, our Let's Talk Aged Care initiative, uh, where any older person or their loved one, a son or daughter or a friend or neighbour, um, can contact us to get independent information and advice about aged care. Uh, in easy to understand language, we hope to break that language down for you, um, that explains uh, the jargon and acronyms and, and, and what aged care is all about. Uh, our information and support is about finding and using services and supports uh, that help you to live safely in your own home for as long as possible. And being independent, our Let's Talk Aged Care team can give information and support that helps you to make your own informed decisions and choices about who, and, um, who provides some support services to you. I also acknowledge the Country SA Primary Health Network, or PHN, uh, who fund our Let's Talk Aged Care work in across Country SA and thank them for their commitment to supporting older people to live well in Country SA. We've already held two of these webinars, uh, the Let's Talk Aged Care webinars, and we have 
another one uh, next week on the 1st of June. I'll be hosting each webinar and talking with our various Let's Talk Aged Care staff. Um, we have up to an hour today to uh, talk about aged care and, and, and answer some questions and so on. We're also recording these webinars, so we'll make them available to you if you would like it, uh, and we'll send to those people that couldn't attend today as well. Um, again, that recording will just be what you see on the screen, so it won't include uh, any visuals of you or it won't include that chat box on the side either. So again, you can safely ask the questions you'd like to, um, so please do that. We will attempt to answer all of your questions in the time that we've got today, uh, and we welcome any relevant questions. Um, I'll repeat your question before we attempt to answer it. Uh, and if we run out of time to ask any questions or if there's, there's something that we might need to explore a bit more information about, we can always get back to you with some responses to those questions as well. So we're delighted to be able to share this information with you today and I hope that it helps you to understand aged care and access aged care supports for yourself or your parent or your loved one. During the last two webinars, we started right at the beginning um, about, and we looked at aged care and really explored what aged care is in Australia. Uh, we looked at aged care broadly, but then we looked more closely at aged care that's delivered in people's homes. Um, and my aged care, of course, which is the entry point for uh, people to access services. Uh, but as we have a new audience today um, and people from across uh, country regions of SA, we'll summarise that a little bit today before we move into aged care in the country. So as I said, we're joined by John Moran, our Country Ageing Well Coordinator this week, and we'll talk about aged care in Country SA and its unique uh, opportunities and challenges. So welcome, John, and let's talk aged care. Thanks, Jermaine. It's a pleasure to be here. Right. Thanks, John. So let's just, like I said, we'll summarise aged care a bit before we get started. So aged care in Australia is, is provided to older people um, to live in their own homes as long as possible, where they've lived sometimes for years and years and, and feel the most comfortable. We all feel the most comfortable in our own homes, don't we? And that's where we want to stay living for as long as possible. We know that about older people. Older people want to stay living in their own homes and their own communities, their own familiar environments. Um, as we know, aged care does also include nursing homes. Uh, well, what was traditionally called nursing homes, but now they're uh, more referred to as residential aged care facilities. And that they are uh, places where people can receive round the clock support um, for older people that can no longer live uh, safely in their own homes. But our webinars and, and the support that we provide is, is more focused on um, aged care services that are provided to people to live in their own homes. My Aged Care that I've already mentioned, and we have a poster up here that shows the My Aged Care, uh, that's the starting point and it's also the central point for all things aged care. So it's, the it's a website, it's a call centre and it's also a portal. Uh, for uh, So the website and the, the free call number there is for uh, people in the community to look up information, to find providers about aged care. But at the back end of My Aged Care, it's also where all the aged care service providers and the government and um, Services Australia connect together and, and coordinate all the aged care services. As, and I should mention assessors as well that assess people uh, for services and supports. So for older people, this is the starting point to access aged care, uh, in, both for information, to register for support and also to find service providers. So that's aged care in a very small nutshell. So John, can you tell our audience today how to register and to be assessed for aged care services? Yes, Jermaine. Yes, yeah, so the first thing to do before you um, ring my aged care um, is, is to look at your priorities. You know, what's the most important pressing needs for you? And um, also to have your Medicare uh, card re uh, ready as well, So uh, because I'll ask you about that. 
And when you actually ring my aged care, it'll take about 20 minutes um, because uh, the person over the phone will be asking you a series of questions. Um, and again, sort of focus on the things you're having difficulty. Be, be honest with yourself and think, well, where am I struggling? And um, what are my most pressing needs? And also they'll give you a number at the end of that call. And this number, um, they call it an AC number, but it's essentially an identification number uh, for you with the My Age Care system. So it's your number, and when you ring up in the future, you can quote that number and it'll get all your details up. So it, can, it sort of streamlines things mm. a bit a bit more, actually. Um, uh, yeah, and, and the other thing you might feel, if you're not feeling confident or you're um, struggling with a lot of the bureaucracy of government, you can have someone ring on your behalf. And if you do that... Uh, what the assessor will do is they'll ask you your permission to speak to the person you want to speak on your behalf. And that, and that person uh, can be, if you like, in the future, your representative, and they will have their own number as well um, as your representative. So, you know, if, if you're feeling that this is something uh, my son and daughter are usually really good at and they're really savvy with, then... Um, that could be something uh, of real benefit to you where, where they can be the go-between uh, and talk about your needs on your behalf if you don't feel comfortable yourself. Mm. Um, uh, the My Age Care Assessor will then decide whether you need uh, what's called a, a, a more surface, uh, a lighter assessment uh, with a regional assessment uh, person or if you need a much more in-depth assessment, and they're called an aged care assessment by what's called the aged care assessment team, the ACAP team. So uh, they're the sort of two uh, assessments that happen over the phone initially. If you've got lower needs, uh, then you'll have a regional assessment uh, for what's called a Commonwealth Home Support Program. And uh, Jermaine's actually just got that up now um, on, on our screen and you can see the flow chart there. So the, lo the lower level supports are with the regional assessment service and they're on the left and on the right you can see the comprehensive assessment with an aged care assessment team. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so they're for the lower needs. Um, so with the more complex needs, uh, that that then leads you into what are called home care packages. So they're uh, they're much more detailed, uh, more in depth. Um, those assessments and they range from levels one to four. So they're they're um, and they're usually uh, you have a, um, a coordinator attached to that sort of service. Um, yeah. So. Uh, um, the assessment uh, may be in the country, your assessment may be over the phone or it may be um, in your home. Uh, this can really depend in the country because of, because of distance is obviously a big factor in the country and um, some of the, uh, the assessment people are very skilled at being able to do phone assessments if, it, if it's just really difficult or if they're short of staff. So, you know, it can be either or in the country, whether you get uh, someone coming to your home or whether it's over the phone only. Um, the assessments usually take an hour, and so be prepared for that. And th that'll determine whether you're eligible for a, a Commonwealth Home Support Program or, as I said before, a home care package. Um, try and be prepared for your assessment as well. So uh, think of all the areas where you feel you're needing support. You know, um, is it about keeping yourself safe at home, uh, uh, looking after yourself? Is it around your struggling with your showering and your, your personal hygiene? Is it around managing your medications? Is it about household chores? Um, is it around transport? You, you may not be able to drive anymore or um, a loved one who was doing all the driving is now no longer able to do that. Um, is it about socialising? You know, you're feeling a bit more isolated now. Um, 
and that can happen um, uh, as friends move away from areas and things like that. And the important consideration in all this is not to downplay um, your situation um, because if you do, then uh, the assessor's not getting a true picture of your needs mm. and that's what they need. They, they really do want to understand what your situation is. Um, and also maybe uh, have a pen and paper, take notes. Um, uh, if you've got someone with you, they could write uh, information down um, and also seek clarification. If you don't understand anything, uh, the assessors are usually very happy to clarify things. So if you, you know, if they use some some uh, acronym, you, you know, I'm not brilliant with acronyms either. I like to write it down. So you know, that that's really helpful um, to you know take notes. Don't be afraid to ask. Mm, that's a really good tip. Thank yeah. you, John. Yeah. So it sounds like there's two levels of assessment, aren't there? Mm. The first one when we call my aged care and we have that screening mm. call mm. that can take mm. 20 minutes or so and determines whether we uh, need, like you say, the RAS or Regional Assessment Service for those lower level services, or whether we need an ACAT assessment or the aged care assessment team for the more complex uh, home care package. Mm -hmm. So there's two levels, aren't yes, there? There, there? There are yeah. one through my aged care, and then uh, and, the, and the second assessment, whether it's through the RAS or the ACAT, there's those acronyms again. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are done in your home or possibly longer phone calls, aren't they? Yes, yes. They right. Are. Yeah. They're Thank much you. more detailed. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So let's let's imagine that um, we've had, we've had, we've gone down the the path that our you know our needs are considered uh, to be lower level, and perhaps we have a RAS assessment, um, and we it's been determined that we need Commonwealth Home Support Program. Program services, what does that mean? What are Commonwealth Home Support Program services? Yes. So generally, um, if you've had that assessment with, with a regional assessment person or a RAS, RAS assessor, yeah. um, they're usually around, like we said, the lower level support. So they're usually around, it could be domestic help, it could be, uh, you know, occasional gardening support. It could be around uh, a one-off garden tidy, um, especially if, you know, you're, struggling with keeping uh, <laughs> your garden under control, uh, which can often happen. It could also be around uh, home modifications. Now, uh, this can involve the assessor, you know, determining that you might need rails or ramps in your home or you've got trip hazards, and in which case they usually then refer it to an occupational therapist who will then come to your home and assess what you're needing. So if it's rails, um, they will actually measure up uh, according to your height um, and where, where, the, where the rails have to go, and then they then refer that on to a provider to uh, install those rails. It's the same with ramps as well. Uh, they will look at if there's a lot of steps uh, the angle of the ramp and, you know, so that it meets the standards. So that's all done um, through the uh, occupational therapist. Um, the other thing they also do with Commonwealth Home Support Programs is social support. They could try and link you to uh, programs where you can be subsidised to attend. It could be strength and balance classes or it could be social groups that uh, may be run by councils and things like that. It could be transport as well. So it could be so you can get your shopping done and, and they uh, might have a program run by one of the, uh, uh, the services in a country town that do that sort of transport and they fund that. Um, and you need that uh, referral code uh, for that approval to get all these services through the Commonwealth Home Support Program. Yeah, um, and so uh, usually, and leading on to that is really uh, what happens is uh, they will do referral codes um, and send them to a portal and, uh, and agencies that are eligible to provide those services will pick them up out of the portal in the My Age Care system. Um, the other way they do do it, though, so it's not necessarily clear cut they may leave you with uh, a bit of paper with the referral codes and what the service is for and then you're required to ring up and seek out those services and they should give you a list of the 
providers that provide those services. So there's, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a grey area, that area, but um, uh, so there's the, there's the two ways they either do it through the portal system or they might lead you to, to look for those services yourself. Um, so I'm making a mental note there, John, mm, that I would mm, have that written down yeah, to absolutely. actually make sure that I get that clear from that's the RAS assessment. That's a really assessment. good point, Jermaine. That's a really good point. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. No, yeah. that's all right. Yeah. I'd, I'd um, want to know what are, that, what are the codes okay. for? Yeah. Um, am I... Do I need to ring up a provider mm -hmm. and with the codes or are you as the assessor going to put that through the portal yes. and someone will contact me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it can happen two ways. Okay. So, um, and um, then you need to wait usually, if, if it's through the portal system, you usually have to wait for a provider to contact you. Um, if you if you haven't heard, uh, say after two or three weeks it's a good idea to ring up my aged care mm. and say and quote your number that they've given you your identification number with the ac in front of it and say well uh, i haven't heard back yet um from any providers that are meant to be providing me with this service can you let me know if i'm on a wait list or if if someone if it's imminent that someone's going to call right so yeah um yeah so all right yeah, great and what about if we went the other way, John, and I had a, an ACAT assessment uh, for a home care package? Mm -hmm. um, if I'm eligible for a home care package, what does that mean? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, that's a home care package, like I said before, is a much uh, more involved uh, um, support that you get through service providers. And um, they, they, those packages are coordinated with a coordinator, usually from um, one agent see um, that uh, you get to choose down the, the track. I'm, I'm dumping ahead a bit of myself. Um, but um, yeah, so these these services um, usually have set amounts for them. So if you're in, in the level one and two, they're lower amounts. And as you go up to level three and four packages, they're much higher amounts. Um, and uh, yeah, those services um, uh, are usually around more intense support. So there, that could be around more personal care. It can still include things like domestic support, uh, but it could also be around um, medication management. It could be around monitoring your medications. It could be check visits. It could be um, uh, meal preparation. Um, it's, it's a lot more involved. Sometimes um, things evolve where uh, you might need um, things like uh, wound care and things like that could come into it as well. So it's a much more in depth. Um, uh, yeah, and usually what happens is you'll receive a letter from the government saying that you've been approved for X level of support. So the government will say, yes, you've been approved for, say, a level two package or a level three package. Um, and then usually you go on a bit of a wait list and then you'll get another letter. So even though you've been approved for a package, it doesn't mean your package is available to you yet. But what you'll get then is when you, that package is available or that money is available, you'll get assigned the package. The package is assigned. That means it's available. And that's when you have to start looking for providers to, to see who can provide those services. Great, yeah. So the key there is that it's a package of coordinated care, isn't yes, it? Yes. And then it's up to me to find yes. the, and choose the provider that I want to coordinate those, mm -hmm. and provide those services. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm online, like our audience is online today, if I'm at that point, how do I find an aged care provider to provide my home care package? Well, if you've got access to a computer, it's quite easy to go onto the My Age Care website and you go to the Find a Provider tool um, that's on the website. And Jermaine's going to demonstrate how we do this. Um, so there we are. Yeah. So there's the Find a Provider tool. Yep. So, so Jermaine's now going down and she's clicking on what's the right provider for me. 
and it's what type of support is it? Oh, no, sorry, it's the town or, or yeah, the I can region. I can yeah, sorry, I can't see it very well. That's all right, I can yeah, explain. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, so I'm at the Finder Provider tool. So I live in Port Piri, for instance. So I've typed in Port Piri there and I'm going to select that. Now I can scroll down and pick my options options and search for providers there. So under care type, I'm going to go down and say that I've been assessed for a home care package. So I'm going to select that and click done. Then back up here, I'm going to say under services that I've been assessed for a level three package. So I'm going to select that. Click on done. Then I'm going to go search. We've got some results. Here are the providers in your area, 25 providers in our area. I can also go back up to this button here that says more, and I can click on the bit that says with availability, which might narrow down the search a little bit. So let's try and see if that works by clicking with availability. Done, and I'll update that search. 25, so it looks like they've all got availability. So what we're looking at here, John, isn't it, is a list of the providers that are providing home care package level three in the Port Piri Port area. Piri. Port Piri. yeah. Okay. So 25 providers is quite a lot, isn't it? Mm, so yeah. it means... Port Piri is a big regional and it's near Port Augusta and mm. Rayla, so... Yeah, they're hmm. big, big regional centres. Yeah. So, yeah. so from here, I might look at this list and see that there's 25 and I might recognize some names of providers there. Um, I might there might be some that I've not heard of before. Um, let's scroll through and have a look. Um, there's all sorts of ones there and there might be specialist services too. We can see one here that says Aboriginal community services that provide home care packages. Uh, so that might be relevant to me. Or I might go, I might keep going and go, oh, kin care. Yes, I've heard of them, or maybe my neighbour uses them or something like mm -hmm. that. So I might recognise a name there. Again, there's one that uh, specialises in, in Polish communities. So we might just go through and sort of uh, select a couple uh, to, to ring and compare. Mm. Yeah, so what you can do, um, as Jermaine said, you can you know, write down their names and their numbers and, um, uh, you know, look at at least three or four and, you know, get a feel, ring them up, you know, ask them, ask, you know, various questions of the providers, you know, um, because you've got to work out what's important for you and, um, you know, ask things like, you know, what are, what are their fees? Um, uh, are they flexible, like if you change a provider, you know, do they have flexibility around that? Do they charge an exit fee? Um, is there a con continuity of their workforce, which is a, it is a big challenge in aged care, um, but some of the providers might have a very stable workforce, and that's a really good indication to go by. Um, and um, also you can ask them around uh, I suppose their punctuality with providing services. So, you know, do they use a time frame when they would provide a service or are they, do they have set times that are quite precise? Because, you know, um, obviously they're coordinating a lot of staff and, you know, um, if, say, uh, they're running late, will they notify you, for instance? Because, you know, if you've got your regular routine with a provider, you want to know if someone hasn't shown up you know, what's going on. So, you know, they're, they're the sort of um, things to consider. Um, and also, uh, you know, do they have branding that, you know, they identify their workers? Do they have badges and things like that? Um, do they specialise in certain areas? Like, is you know, do they have, you know, uh, special cultural language services, uh, workers that uh, speak in language and things like that? Um, uh, do they have... Uh, workers who might be trained in, say, specialising in, in dementia. So if, if you've got a loved one who you're looking after, um, you know, they might need a worker that's really um, uh, aware of the needs of someone with dementia. So, so they're, they're questions you can ask. Um, don't necessarily go for the big providers that you see on television. You know, the find a provider... Uh, 
um, website that that domain access. There's 25, and not all of them are going to advertise, are they? Mm. You know, the, the, you know, there's smaller ones there. Sometimes the smaller ones might be more um, sort of uh, particular with their staffing and and with the service that they provide. Um, you can also uh, consider self management, which which is a whole other area um, that uh, I believe Jermaine will be looking at in another webinar. We will, yes. Yeah, and also make a um, just a short a, a, a short contact list. You know about their availability. Um, uh, do the, are they a provider that's actually got an office in the town or a nearby town? Because availability. Availability um, can be a real challenge in the country and it, it's good for them to be up front with you to, so at least you know, you know, um, how quickly a service might be coming, becoming available. There's a lot to consider, isn't there? There, there is a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. So make have that bit of paper, have your list, have it all separate. This is around services for me. You know, these are the things I need to ask. These are the things I want to ask providers when I'm... Um, doing my research on that. You know. And it's also about working out what's important to yes. you as well, isn't yeah, it, John? Yeah, that maybe we don't care that a, a, a service is heavily branded or not <laughs> branded, or maybe, uh, you know, maybe cost is the most important to yeah. us, so we might want to compare the costs, yeah. or maybe uh, punctuality, maybe maybe continuity of the same worker coming to, to mm. assist me yeah. uh, is important to me, so maybe my questions might be around that. Yeah. Maybe that's not um, so important to me. So yeah. they're the sorts of things mm -hmm. um, to work out what's important for you mm -hmm. in your with your services, and those are the sorts of questions that you ask uh, each of the providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing with country, obviously, is distance, and that, and that can be a real challenge. And one thing I've learned over the years is um, if if you've say got three services in a week, and a lot of that services being taken up with travel then maybe you could consider asking the provider can we reduce those number of occasions you have that service but you get a longer service when you have mm. it and that may then reduce um, that uh, travel time and costs so that's a thing to consider um, when you're living in the country um, and also to ask do they have workers in your town or the nearby town because again that can affect you know how much service you get because if they're nearby and it's just you know popping in and mm. you know doing the support so mm. so there are other things to consider um uh and um yeah and just again their capacity you know where are they at are they are they inundated are they just motoring along well they can accommodate your package quite mm. easily and things mm. like that so i might also ask too that if, if if a provider tells me no we don't have capacity to provide um a level three home care package at this time i, I might even ask well when do you expect that you mm. might have mm. capacity can i call you back at that time mm. or, or something mm. like that yeah, to question. try and, yeah yeah mm. Yeah, and I might also, if I'm having trouble going through that list of, say, 25 and I'm finding trouble, I might actually go back to my aged care and ring yes. my aged care again and say, well, I'm having trouble. Can you help me mm. find the provider that's um, mm. um, got availability? And, of course, that's what John's here for as well, yeah. that yeah. can help with yeah. that sort I'm, of thing as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to, you know, if you ring up, uh, that's what I'm here for, so. Great. All right. So what about those people that aren't online, John? How might they find uh, a, a service provider, whether that's um, Commonwealth Home Support Program services or um, the home care package that we've just talked about? How, how can people that aren't online yeah, find well, out? That's a really valid question, Jermaine, because obviously uh, con connectivity in the country can be. <laughs> and I live in the hills and, and we have trouble all the time. Um, yeah, so there's the aged care guide that we've got here, and we can mail those out to people. Um, so that's a guide for all the uh, aged care services that uh, are in the state. Um, you can also uh, ring up my aged care and ask them for a list mm. as well. So they look, you know, can you can ring them up and say, look, I live in this area, I'm looking for a provider. Can you send out mail out a list to me? Uh, we can also do that as well. We can, you know. Um, uh, uh, go on the My Aged Care website, get a list and post that out to you as well. 
Um, and the other thing that's really worthwhile doing is asking your local community, if you know anyone that might be getting services already, well, who's providing those services? Because it could be someone that you've never heard of, uh, have, you might have missed in the list there, and they might have workers in, a, in your town or nearby that, you know, it might be a way in of getting those services. Mm. So, to, you know, uh, local knowledge is, is always really great. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, of yeah. course. So what if I'm having real trouble, John, and I'm really having trouble finding someone with services available? What, what can I do? I'm sort of, you know, what if I'm at my wit's end and I just can't seem to get anywhere and I can't find a provider with, with services? Yeah, this can be a big issue in the country because um, often, uh, especially in the outlying areas, uh, it, there often is only one or two, and in, in which case you might just have to go with what's there. Um, but yeah, because, again, it's, it's you know, uh, the nature of being in the country, unfortunately, you know, there, there are limits with uh, where providers will provide services, I suppose. Um, the other thing is to consider alternatives. What are the alternatives outside the aged care sector where you might be able to still get some forms of support, um, but it's not necessary through the aged care system. So these could be private services, like there could be a private contractor who does the, you know, does gardening and mowing or cleaning and things like that. Are there neighbours or family and friends that, you know, uh, there might be a son of a neighbour who will mow your lawns for you for, you know, five or ten dollars yeah. you know like all of a sudden you've solved that problem um uh you know are there neighbors that could you know if you're struggling with preparing meals you know would they be willing to help you out because you most probably have known your local neighbors for a long time and they're most probably just waiting to be asked so that they can come over and have a chat you know um uh, are there family members or neighbours who, who um, are going into the major centres to do their shopping and can you hitch a ride with them or even offer to, you know, put some money towards fuel so you can go with them? And, again, that eliminates the issue of transport because, you've, you know, you've got the, you know, and also the other thing to consider there is you're strengthening your bonds with your, your family, your friends, your neighbours. That's really important in the country. Uh, I know... Country people are often um, very reserved and they want to, you know, feel that they're independent. But it's also the social connections are really important in those instances. You know, you know, neighbours are more usually usually more than willing to help out. Um, is there any sort of um, assistance that you could provide? Like, so, so if you've got fruit trees, um, you could exchange some fruit for someone to do your gardening or prepare meals. Um, if you're a real knitter, maybe you could do some knitting for them and they might um, clean your windows. It's sort of like bartering, really. You know, yeah. so, you know, you sort of, you know, things aren't necessarily as transactional in the money sense. It's like a more of a communal type thing. So you're sort of trying to think outside the box. Is there online shopping available? That could be another option. Um, with appointments, especially doctor, doctor's appointments, is there telehealth where you can just simply ring up mm -hmm. and ring the doctor and, you know, talk about what's going on and then they can recommend if you need to come in or not. And that can, again, save you time and money in a trip. Um, if it's around maybe cleaning and domestic support, is there other options? Um, as Jermaine mentioned to me, well, what about a clothes horse? If you can't get your arms yeah. above your shoulders because your shoulders are going on you. What about getting a clothes or so you can hang your washing out in the house? Is there a lighter mop, like a sponge mop, that you can use instead of a heavy mop? Is there a stick vacuum cleaner you can use instead of using a big old heavy clunker that, you know, you've got to lug around? and Or and even make... a robot vacuum oh. these days. Oh, they're wonderful, they're like they? a rain machine. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Uh, yeah, and, um, yes, yeah, and just sort of looking at those, trying to think outside the box. So uh, you're trying to work out how you can uh, keep your independence um, at home. Um, 
Uh, yeah, then like I said, you know, uh, sharing petrol costs, you know, if there's things like that. Is there a community bus maybe that the council runs um, that you might have to ring the council and, and get on their list or you might have to have an, a, a Commonwealth Home Support Program assessment for it? But sometimes there, there are uh, bus services that uh, councils run that you could use instead of trying to drive your car everywhere. Um, what else? Are there service clubs that have volunteers that would be willing to help you out? You know, especially with one-off things like garden clubs and that where they, you know, I, I know uh, from experience where um, I was in another field uh, attached to the aged care system and there was a great gardening club that we used to access quite regularly for people who needed their one-off tidy-ups for their garden. So, um they're things to uh, consider. Um, and, you know, like I said, volunteers who might, you know, be attached to one of the uh, clubs that, you know, might do your gutter cleans or something like that. Um, so that might be Lions or lines, CWA or yeah, RSL maybe. RSL, Kiwanis, yeah, all those yeah. wonderful yeah, groups. Yeah. 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 So good point. All right. So... They're lots of good options, aren't they? So, mm. all right, let's go back to if I have found um, a, 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 an aged care service provider within the aged care system. Let's say I've, I have found a service provider that can provide the services and supports that I want. Um, what happens next? How do we get that going? So, uh, yep, so if you've found a provider, again, confirm their availability for, for, to do, you know, to do the supports, you know, how, how quickly can things get going. Um, again, ask, do they service your town? Do they have workers in your town? But, um, you know, but again, there could still be a bit of a wait. Uh, um, ask also, because what can happen, sometimes providers uh, do provide services, but they broker them out to another service and is there an extra cost if they do that? Because they might say, yes, we do provide that service, oh, but, you know, do they broker that service or do they use their own workers? You know, so, mm. so that can happen. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, and how do they manage their travel costs? Because, again, in country, what are they charging for to provide that service? You know, you know, is there is it only petrol costs or is it uh, workers' time and uh, costs, uh, uh, petrol costs? So they're things to be aware of. Um, also, the other thing is um, to discuss um, with the provider um, what the supports you're needing. So what will happen is once you've been approved and you've chosen a provider, they will make a time with you to meet with you and talk about your care needs and do a support plan. So again, there's that process, what's the most important thing for me that's going to help me get by? And, um, and are there limits with what they can offer with? Because some of the higher level supports um, can have quite detailed plans attached to them. Are they able to do those things? So they're, they're the things to ask. And that's part of that support plan process. Also, they should let you know about, um, uh, about the costs involved as well. You should, uh, when you're on a home care support package, you should be getting at least every three months a, a breakdown of what's been spent in your package and what's left in your package. So they're all the things you should be getting from a provider. Okay. The good thing is that with um, having a provider, you usually get allocated a coordinator. So you should be able to ring up that agency and ask them, oh, you know, this has happened. Uh, can I speak to Jodie because um, she's my coordinator of my package and mm. I just want to discuss something mm. with her. So, so that can be really helpful as well. So, okay. Yeah. So what you're saying, John, is, is it's a bit of a process of negotiation, isn't it? When yeah. you've found a provider yeah. with availability, you sort of want to bed all those things yeah. down, yeah. work all those things out. Uh, and then there's a process, I think, of um, saying, yes, I want you to be my provider and, and, mm -hmm. and just sign engage. an agreement with them. Yeah. You sign an agreement. And, um, and again, in a way, you're having another assessment. I, I apologise for that, but that's the way <laughs> it is because you're having an assessment with the provider. 
So you may have had... Which is fine-tuning, it, isn't it? It is fine-tuning. Try yeah. and be positive. <laughs> it is. But, it, but they're the ones that are going to provide the service. So they, they are the people on the ground who are going to support you. So they need to, you know, you need to bet down what they're going to do, mm. how they're going to do it, when they're mm. going to do it, what the costs are. Mm. So they're all things that you'll have those discussions with the provider. Fantastic. Yeah, Great. Yeah, Great. yeah. And the other thing, again, in country, like I said before, if you're seeing in this assessment that they want to provide, you know, services four times a week, but a huge amount of that's being chewed up with travel, is it beneficial to reduce the number of occasions but have a larger amount of time to get a, a more complete service, but also then there's less travel. So, yeah, that's so, a really good tip. Yeah, just to keep that in the back of your mind. Mm. You know? So what else is it, uh, uh, as part, I guess, uh, along with the travel uh, issue that can be an issue in the country regions, what are some of the other unique issues around aged care in the country regions? Yeah, yeah that's a really good uh, question. Again, what we said before, um, there can be workforce issues in the country. Um, uh, uh, there can be issues around privacy as well in the country because if you're in a small country town and that's where you might have to reiterate with a provider, look, you know, I want this service to be quite private. People know me in the town. You're providing me with a service. I, I don't want them to know what services you're providing me with. So, you know, they're, they're things to be aware of. Again, there's that perennial chestnut travel. Yeah. Distance is a big one. And, um, you know, again, is there a way of doing services? So say if you've got an appointment in shopping and you have in your package transport to go to appointments in shopping, can you combine them, try and make the appointment on the same day? So you're getting your shopping done as well as going to the appointment. So, again, you're making efficient choices to get the most out of your package. So they're things to consider because, again, unfortunately, uh, with country, travel is a huge one. Um, but the positive things with country too is that often the providers uh, who have workers in the town may know you already. You may have been a teacher to them or something like yeah. that. And so they're very aware of your needs and you might be quite comfortable with that and you might feel a more open that you can approach them about things. So that can be a, that can be a real um, a benefit. Um, and also, um, again, there's the idea of if there are other issues where you think, you know, you might be able to call on a service club that knows you as well in the town. So mm. that can be very benefit, beneficial as well. Um, yeah, so, so um, yeah, it's, it's sort of, again, when you're dealing with those things is to be very clear with the providers, uh, you know, if there's, if you're concerned about privacy issues or if you're, um, uh, feeling good that you've got people who you know are doing the service, well, that's a bonus. So mm. there's all, all those sorts of things in, in country towns that are quite different in the big cities. Yes, so, yes, you know, that's definitely a benefit, isn't it, is having mm. those really nice supportive communities that you mm. live in in country towns, mm. that's for sure. Because often those, those people are, are really... Um, uh, happy to do those supports for mm. you because they, they've known you for a mm. while. All right. So do you have any other tips um, or advice for older people living in country areas around ageing well? Yeah. So one of, the, one of the really key things that we get uh, here at CODA is people ringing up and say, oh, I've been discharged from hospital and I can't walk or something like that. So if you're in hospital, one thing to consider before you're sent home uh, are you feeling okay about going home without any supports? Because you might think, oh, heck, I'm not walking very well and I'm wobbly on my feet. So that means you have to have those discussions with the discharge planner or social worker in the hospital to say, oh, look, you know, I'm feeling a bit vulnerable here, again, being upfront and honest, uh, before you're sent home because there are packages of support you can get through the hospital system like restorative care packages or transitional care packages. So um, you can get those supports while you're rehabilitating rather than just being sent home and thinking, oh, heck, I'm worried about having my shower because 
you know, uh, I've had an operation on my leg and I feel really unsteady on my feet. So they're the things that can happen in the hospital system to be aware of. So try and get those things organised before you leave hospital. Um, and uh, think about other things that you could do uh, in the country about changing uh, the way you do things in your home. So are there things that you can make easier for yourself? You know, like, um, like for instance, there could be a giant shrub that you're forever pruning. Is it more beneficial just to get rid of the shrub? If the lawn is, you know, something that's just, you know, giving you a headache every fortnight, would it be easier to get rid of the lawn and maybe put some gravel down? Or lock at my house, just let it die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, and the other thing is, you know, um, if you're still in a big home uh, and you're trying to heat a big home and clean a big home, is it easier just to close off those rooms mm -hmm. and, and just think, well, I'm not using those rooms anymore. I'm just going to more focus on the lounge and the kitchen mm -hmm. and my bedroom rather than the other back rooms. And, and you know, again, it's taking the pressure off you to think that you've got to keep your whole house spick and span because, you know, you're, you mm. know, flittering here and there. Um, um, the other thing to also look at is uh, if you're um, uh, living at home and you're a couple um, and you're struggling to do a task, maybe it's time to talk to hubby and say, look, hubby, I think you're going to need to learn to do some of the cooking because I can't lift these heavy pots anymore or whatever and make it sort of a, a an activity where you're teaching and they're learning or vice versa or maybe there's more domestic support that uh, your partner could do that you were doing that you're now struggling to do. Right. So there's those negotiations you can have. To, again, it's to try and keep you in your home keep your quality of life, keep your independence. They're really important things. And sometimes it's about changing the way you're doing things. As Jermaine said, you know, is it a, do you really need a law anymore? You know, you know, putting gravel down all that astroturf, you know, all of a sudden you don't have to worry about it, you know, and it's not something that's burdening you. Um, yeah, so uh, the other thing is um, if you're looking after someone, um, are you registered in the Carer Gateway? Because you can get quite a, a number of services through the Carer Gateway, including some funded supports uh, and some funded respite support. So they're a very good avenue if you're a family carer or you're caring after a partner where you can get services. They're, they're invaluable, really. Um, and it's also um, something where... Uh, if you're really struggling, you can also get some counselling support as well is available through that service. Um, I'll just point yeah. out, uh, and I'll share this screen as well, there's, yeah. a, there's a page on the My Aged Care website, which is support for people living in rural and remote areas, mm -hmm. um, that talks about multi-purpose services, mm -hmm. um, where aged care services can be be integrated with healthcare services yes. like hospital and mm -hmm. acute and uh, allied health services. Uh, there's also, uh, let's have a look, there's also, uh, there's quite a bit there on that website. So I would suggest um, going to that page, support for people living in rural, rural and remote areas. There's also on this menu on the side, it's a bit hidden there, but uh, support for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, there's some, there's some uh, links there to some videos and some pages that um, support Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Uh, and there's also some translated resources too, which is great uh, in, in some of the different languages, which is wonderful. Um, there's also, I think, uh, if you're thinking about residential aged care or that nursing home care, there's also a brochure there called, uh, where it, there it is, 10 questions to ask, which is a really helpful resource to ask about. Um, that could be used for home care as well, some of the good questions you can ask. So I would recommend going to that page, that's for sure. Okay. All right, we've got about five minutes left. Mm. Uh, okay, so we've got one question here that's popped up in the chat box a little earlier. Uh, I've left it to the end, but um, 
let's see, it's from Joy Ann here, which says, Joy Ann says, I got a letter about getting a level two package, but now I hurt my back and I probably need more. Should I ring my aged care again? Yeah, this is something to weigh up because um, uh, if you've been assigned a package already, Joanne, um, then uh, it can be worthwhile still picking up that package um, because you can get a service started for you. But you can at any time ring my aged care to have a reassessment, especially um, if it's something that's really impacting you, your quality of life and you, it, it really means that you're going to have to review um, how you can stay independent in your home. So there's two ways you can go with that. You can, you, you can still engage the provider, but you can still also um, go back to my aged care and you can also talk to your provider if they're starting service and, and let them know, look, I've hurt my back. They might sort of, uh, you know, do a, another uh, assessment with you and actually say, oh, yeah, you, we do need to go back to my aged care because, you know, you're struggling to, you know, maybe shower yourself now and, and you're at falls risk or something like that. So they're really red flags. So um, that is a tricky one, actually, but, but you can, it's a bit of a judgment call. But either way, you can always go back to my aged care to be reassessed if you feel your your needs have changed, you know, any time you can do that. Mm, that's a good message. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, yeah. Joanne. Okay, all right. Other questions there? Okay, that's fabulous. Well, thank you so much, John, for sharing that information with um, our participants today and responding to uh, the one question that we did have. Um, we know country people love where they live. We know that, and it's so important to be able to get support um, to continue to be part of your local community and in your town. So thank you, John. Thanks for your knowledge. John is available on the phone of our country free call number 1800 182 324 you're most welcome to call John and have a chat um the other thing of course is that aged care is is a federal government area so with our new federal government now and whether the member the local member in your area is the returning member or uh, a new local member you know if, if you're struggling to find services and supports go and hit that person up and say look this you know, we need aged care services in this area, in this town, in this region, whatever it is. Tell them about your experiences and, and you know, ask them to, to push for aged care services and supports in your area. Um, that, that's, you know, a new government, that aged care is one of the uh, key oh, yeah. issues and one of the priorities. So now's a really good time to go and talk to your uh, local member about improving services in country areas. So thank you all for joining us today. I hope you gained a better understanding of aged care in country SA. Again, if you'd like more tips uh, to navigate this part of aged care, finding a service provider in your area, um, even though there might be limited availability or choice, think about the urgency of your needs. And, and like John said, prioritise what's most important to you. Um, you can contact John again for more navigation uh, and information support again on that country free number 1800 182324 and just on that Jermaine I welcome any questions that you ask about aged care there's no question that's that's um you know don't feel silly about asking questions about you know even if it's about you know oh what do I how do I bring up my aged care to, you know what do I need to ask them you know we can talk through all those things and I'm here for that. That's my role. And we're independent. Absolutely. Absolutely independent. So our, our role is purely to assist people uh, navigating the my aged care system. Absolutely. So, so. It is a difficult system to understand and navigate. It's a difficult system to use. We know that. Um, there have been a lot of advances over the years that are making it easier, um, but that is our role to, to help you through that process. So, again, you're most welcome. And yeah. like John said, no question is silly. No. Um, there's been plenty of other questions that we've helped people along the way, and, and that's where our expertise is. So we're only too happy to help. Yeah.
Um, with regards to this webinar, we can um, send you this webinar recording if you'd like, uh, and you're most welcome to contact with any other questions. We'd also ask you, because you're online, to visit our Kota SA website. Uh, you can click on programs and then let's talk aged care. You'll find a number of videos, um, some downloadable and printable uh, fact sheets and help sheets that are useful as well. Um, you can use that. You can also go back to, we, we demonstrated a little bit today on the My Aged Care website. Mm -hmm. So get onto the My Aged Care website and have a play. Type in your town in the service provider tool. Have a look at the sorts of providers and things that are available there. Um, again, that that aged care guide that John mentioned. Um, we can you, post them out. Yeah, we well. can post one of those out to you if that helps, uh, definitely. And there's also another service through Service. Australia uh, that are rolling out some uh, aged care information helpline. Uh, there's a helpline, but there's also they're also rolling out some uh, offices where you can go and have a face-to-face -face appointment with in Services Australia. So if you're living in the Berry area, uh, you're very lucky because that's the first one that's been rolled out in South Australia in in the regional area. That's in Berry. So if you are in the Berry uh, Berry Barmer area, you can go along and meet with someone at Services Australia. There, that's by appointment. One eight hundred double two seven four seven five is the number to contact Services Australia for that if you're in the Berry region. Uh, and as new regional offices are uh, established, we'll certainly let you know um, through our website and so on about those as they become available. So our last webinar in this series of Let's Talk Aged Care webinars is next Wednesday on the 1st of June. We'll be talking then, or I'll be talking then with Julie. Uh, she's our specialist support worker. So she has a really broad knowledge of aged care services and supports. Um, she'll, she's part of the Aged Care System Navigator trial. Uh, so Julie's going to talk to us about how to manage your services and support. So that webinar is really going to be useful for people that are already receiving maybe a home care package or some Commonwealth Home Support Program services. And she's going to talk to us uh, about um, uh, how to manage those services. Um, if you've um, man managing your services, giving feedback and support and, and, and to your provider and that sort of thing, what to do if your needs change uh, and, 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 and that sort of thing. So Julie, that'll be a really good one to tune into with Julie. If you've registered for that one, you'll receive a new meeting link for that. But if you haven't, again, you can go to our website under events and register through Eventbrite for that webinar uh, and you can join us again then. Um, and so that's it for today. Good timing. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope you um, got some great information there. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye for now. Goodbye. Thanks.